you may go to edit and cut then go to edit and paste in the target folder using cut instead of copy will delete the original and essentially move the file an easier way of selecting all of the files in a window is, is to go to edit and select all Windows has a feature called drag and drop this allows people to drag objects like files from one location to another using drag and drop we may achieve the same thing as going to edit cut and edit paste let's try copying the files on my camera to the summer 2010 folder on my computer using the drag and drop method first I ensure that both the source folder and the target folder are both on the screen simultaneously. I select the image files in the camera, then I left click on one of the files. While holding down the left mouse button, bring the mouse cursor over the target window, the summer 2010 folder. The files now begin copying to your hard drive. Many programs out there support drag and drop. Not only can we create folders and move files into them, but we may also change the way the files are displayed and in what order they're displayed in. In the View menu, you may change the size of the icon, which allows us to see the image in the computer file. Go into the View menu once more and select Details. The Details View mode allows you to not only see the file name, but various details regarding the file. We may also choose how the files are sorted. Let's begin with the details themselves. You will usually see details like name, date, size, and type. In order to add or remove details, right click on the top row of the details window. You will see check marks beside details that are in view. Check or uncheck the details according to your wishes. Me, I have no need for a date taken, ratings, or tags column, so I uncheck them. I do like having a size, type, and date created column, however. Sometimes you have to open the extended list for all of your options. In this view, we can see the file name, the size of the file, the type of the file, and the date the file was created. These columns can be dragged around using the drag and drop method. It's also worth noting that open and save dialog windows use the same system as the My Computer window. Most of the time, the files are sorted by file name, which means that they are displayed in alphabetical order, but sometimes it's useful to see the list of files sorted in another way. Suppose, for instance, you've been saving files in a particular folder for weeks and want to locate the very last file you saved there. As long as you have a date created or date modified column, simply click on it. You will now see a small triangle inside the date column, indicating the files are now sorted by date. An easier way to change the way files are sorted is to go to View and then Sort. If you need to locate a file on your computer, you can search for the file using the search tool. Simply click the Start button and go to Search. Next, find files and folders. Say you downloaded the song Enter the Sandman by the band Metallica, but simply can't find where the file went. Type in Metallica or Sandman into the search text box and hit enter. The search tool now begins searching the computer for all the files whose names have Metallica or Sandman in it. A boot, or a boot up, is when the computer turns on and loads for the first time. During boot up, a large number of computer programs are also started. Much of this software is necessary to the Windows operating system and drivers for devices attached to the computer. A driver is a program that acts as an intermediary between the computer and a device attached to it. Many of the devices attached to your computer, such as video cards, webcams, and printers require drivers to operate. If you have a printer, for instance, 
The drivers for that printer are loaded during boot up. There are, however, many programs loaded by Windows that aren't necessary, and this unnecessary software is the primary cause of computer slowdown. In order to modify which programs are started when the computer first boots up, click the Start button, then Run. In the text box, type MS Config. A window named System Configuration appears with a number of tabs on the top. The two tabs of importance are Services and Startup. Let's begin with the Startup tab. Take a look at the items that are checked. Each of these checked items is a program that is executed the moment Windows is loaded. The programs usually continue running throughout the duration of your computing experience. Many of these programs are unnecessary and therefore only cause the computer to slow down. A checked program that is not associated with a device on your computer, such as a printer, video card, or webcam, is the first sign of an unnecessary startup program. Look at the column that says Manufacturer and see whether that program says Lexmark or Logitech, because if you so happen to own a Lexmark printer or a Logitech webcam, you may want to keep it checked. If you expand the command column, you'll see the full path and actual file name of the startup program. If you wanted to know what justshed.exe is and whether or not you need it to execute during computer startup, simply go to Google and type it in. Type justshed.exe. Often you will find a host of people who are asking about the same file and often their questions have been answered. In this case, it turns out that JustShed.exe is an unnecessary Java updating program. Many programs, especially those involving media like photos, movies, and music, tend to set themselves as one of the startup programs. Even though you may use that software often, there's no need for these kinds of programs to be in the startup list. And now, onto the Services tab. The items in the Services tab is another list of programs that get executed when the computer first starts up, and they too can slow down your computer. On the screen is a list of common Windows services together with their priority rating and brief function description. Services with three stars are recommended and are usually quite vital. Services with two stars may be required by particular users who own certain devices or frequently use certain software but for most users, a two-star service is also optional. Services with one star are very optional and are only required in the rarest cases. These one-star services can be disabled without much concern. If you discover you've disabled a service that is vital to you, simply re-enable a few services that might be associated with the problem. If you're without that kind of patience, simply click Enable all. If there's a service on your list that isn't on mine, type in the service's name into Google and find out what its function is and whether it is necessary. The changes you make using MS Config will not go into effect until the computer is restarted. The majority of settings that the common Windows user needs can be found in the control panel. To open the control panel, click the start button, then settings, then control panel. My control panel is in the classic view. The first item of interest is programs and features, sometimes called add remove programs. Even though many software packages include a dedicated uninstall feature, the control panel is another convenient way of uninstalling software. This is a good place to start in regards to cleaning up your computer. Remove programs you don't use or don't use anymore. And lastly, we return to the control panel so that we may change the setting of our Windows user account. In an application named User Accounts, one may add, modify, or remove a password for the account. You may also change your account permission. For instance, if you want to change the password to your Windows account, click Change Password. Here, you will be asked to enter the account's current password, then type and retype the new password. If you wish to remove your